So the fact that attendance sticks out in such a glaring way and is something that you can create initiatives around is really like a valuable metric to focus on. Talk about Free Unlimited. What is it and how has it increased the offerings that Wattify has? Yeah, so Free Unlimited is a new pricing model that we offer. And the downside of that is... At the end of the day, a gym is a business. And it's a and it's a it's a complex business. It's a difficult business. The failure rate of gyms is like eighty one percent. I know that because I googled it like twenty minutes ago before we started. <laughs> but that that's huge. I mean, that's a, that's like up there yeah. with like the restaurant industry, right? But Wattify's goal is to is to support that gym owner, to give them the tools that they need to enhance their business and then also increase retention. You guys created this benchmark report. You sent it to me a couple of months ago and I thought it was fantastic because you took all this data. It was like 880,000 clients, 360,000 leads, 30, what you call 35 million attendances in the various gyms that utilize your platform. And you took it and you, and you put together this data because as business owners, as entrepreneurs, we've got to make database decisions. Can you talk about the, the the benchmarking report, why it was important to do, and why you guys took it upon yourself to collate that data and then provide it back to the gym owners? They're starting the business for the right reasons, I think, but they can't do it without having thinking about a business as making money. Like you can't just do one or the other. Like if you were just doing it to make money, you probably would get burnt out and not enjoy it, not have passion for it. And if you're just doing it for passion, you you forget the business aspect of it. I mean, I've I've met with gym owners who I, I know are so passionate and love coaching and interacting and building their community, but they're struggling to pay the bills. It's like, hey, this isn't sustainable. This isn't going to work. So um, definitely an issue. And, and why we care about it as a business um, is because that gym failure rate, other than just wanting more gyms to exist in the world, like that's the number one reason we lose customers. So our incentives with our customers are very aligned. And one of the reasons we put out the benchmark, or benchmark report and um, we work with something very similar uh, every year with Two Brain Business, we put, they put out a state of the industry report that uh, is heavily based on our data as well. But for both of those reports, the reason we put it out is we spend as much time obsessing about our customers' numbers as we do as our own business. Because um, if we can help more gyms be healthier financially, it's going to help our business. Selfishly, it's going to help our business. And so just like you know, any competitive fitness event, uh, you, you know what the leaderboard is, you know how fast people are uh, in business, we wanted to give people some... Uh, benchmarks to know what they could aim for or how other people are doing. Uh, so that was kind of a uh, big part of the root of it is just help expose our data. We have access to more gym data than, you know, almost any company in the world. And if we bring that to light in an interesting way, it can help gym owners make decisions. All right. Let's talk about the data for a second. You guys said that attendance is the number one indicator of client retention. And I was looking through this and it was super interesting to me because it said that the majority of the people, when you talk about member engagement, the majority of people actually only go to the gym like six to 12 days per month. Yep. And less than 1% of people go to the gym greater than 12 days per month. Talk about that engagement. And as a gym owner, what are you looking for? And how are you trying to increase and move, move more people over past that six to 12 days per month? Which like, I just, you have to go to, you have to go to the gym more than six days a month. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I mean, I think it's, it sounds kind of obvious, but as we dug in, we look at so many different metrics for retention and the fact that, uh, to make a business decision, often it's, it's most efficient to try to boil it down to one or two things that are within your control. So the fact that attendance sticks out in such a glaring way and is something that you can create initiatives around is really like a valuable metric to focus on. So that's one of the reasons we were really happy with how that data kind of came out and, and why we try to educate gym owners on that being a critical number. Um, in terms of how gym owners can put that into practice, the first thing is just to know where they stand in that benchmark. So like, you know, you could, you should look at your average number of attendances per member per month, and then also just look at all of your members and their attendances per month to see how it breaks down. Like maybe the average is a little misleading. Maybe you have a uh, you know twenty percent of people who are coming 
18 days a month. And then you have 80% who are coming four days a month. And then immediately, you know, where to go focus, like go talk to the people who are coming 18 days, figure out why and what's working for them. And then go try to translate that to the, the people who are coming less. Um, so once you know your numbers, though, a lot of the attendance comes down to um, communication. So being able to check in with your clients, encourage them to come frequently to classes. And so we have some tools to support communication, like in app chat, and we have some other things, but I think a lot of gym owners kind of, uh, once someone buys a membership, they kind of stop focusing on that client and they're like, okay, cool. You have a membership. Now I'm all go to other stuff versus trying to get them to continue coming in. When you look at your client base in the, and the gyms that you're working with, how's that broken out? And what's that distribution look like when you talk about those actual drugs, what's the most important drivers of revenue? Yeah, for most, well, and the disclaimer here is our data set and our customer base is primarily uh, group training based gyms. So CrossFit, functional fitness, uh, we have jujitsu, martial arts schools now, but for the most part, they are uh, a little bit higher cost than you would at like a access based gym. It's like, you know, they're not 10 bucks a month. The average is like 125 bucks a month. And that's kind of the business model. Um, So in that business model, a recurring membership, so just class-based revenue, is uh, the highest component by far. It's about like 80, 80-ish, 80 to 90%. The businesses that uh, stand out that do better than the benchmark for overall revenue always have multiple revenue streams that contribute in some significant way. So the second is usually appointment-based revenue. Usually gyms that have all fall on kind of the lower end of the spectrum for overall revenue. Uh, often don't have any appointment-based revenue. All they do is classes. So a really good way, and the the way to think about that in your business is calculate the average revenue per member. If your average revenue per member is like $100 or $120, you're probably only selling uh, monthly memberships based class-based. If you start selling small group training or personal training or nutrition coaching, you'll see that average revenue per member kind of start to creep up. And and that's where you can um, start generating more revenue without having to just add more people. Is that the biggest metric or the most important metric fi- financially when you talk, look at a gym? Revenue per member? No, I, th- I think honestly the most important metric is profitability. Like there's, there's, I think the other metrics get talked about more, but at the end of the day, and this was something that stuck out from the Two Brain Business Report we did with them, the average gym, um, th- I think the term they use is net owner benefit, but kind of Prof, monthly profit is just under four thousand dollars, which is just not a, that's not enough for a sustainable business. And so, that's the n- most important metric because the at the end of the day, that's what is going to dictate how long you stay in business, how much you can reinvest in the business, and the averages. All these other numbers are important, but a gym in you know a rural city is very different than a gym in Center City, Philadelphia. And so you can't always base uh, your business on just those average revenue per member, number of members. So I I do think it's important to look at those and talk about those. But if you were asking me one metric, if I were to walk into a gym and diagnose the health of their business, I would just look at their P&L and see how much profit they're making each month. Client metrics, I would say the most important is retention. Because retention, like the, you know, analogy of a leaky bucket is like, if you're not if you don't have strong retention, 90 plus percent monthly retention, you are going to be fighting an uphill battle, spending money on marketing and just not uh, kind of growing as healthy of a business as you could be. Well, the churn the churn's going to hurt you because it's going to be cheaper to, to retain a client than it is to go out and have to get a new client. The uh, you, you mentioned in the report that the what you're calling the lag or the length, the length of engagement is only actually 10 to 20 months. I thought that was super fascinating because similar to like the six six days a week that someone goes to the gym, they're actually only a member of the gym for 10 to 20 months. What drives that? Yeah, and uh, interestingly, the broader report that Two Brain Business did with, with gyms outside of just our customer base, the average is eight months. And for us, the average is 16 months. So uh, our customers that use a lot of these retention tools are already kind of double the average, but 
it's it is a smaller number than you might expect just thinking about maybe the gym you go to or, or people joining gyms um i think what drives it that aside from the kind of uncontrollables like people moving and stuff what drives it is being able to provide a experience that people can stay engaged with for multiple years and so that means giving them a path to achieve their goals giving them some way to track their progress towards that goal giving them a way to engage with the community outside of just the class they're in so um there's a lot that goes into it but the way we think about it is um giving them this hybrid experience where they have accountability to their own goals and a way to track it they have a connection to the community and they have a way to interact with your business outside of the just the time they're physically in person so you said when we sat down at CrossFit Games back in August that there were going to be some new, th some new things, some new initiatives that were coming out. One of them was the, the Wattify Free Unlimited. That kicked off right around January 1st. Talk about Free Unlimited. What is it and how has it increased the offerings that Wattify has? Yeah, so Free Unlimited is a new pricing model that we offer. Historically, the way our product has been sold to gym owners is – uh, standard to a lot of software companies. We have three different options and the more you pay, the more features you get access to. And the downside of that is um, newer gyms and maybe just smaller gyms uh, who are on our lower packages don't get access to all our features. And we see a direct correlation between software utilization and financial health of the business. So we were kind of stuck in this dilemma of like, we want all of our customers to have access to all of our features, but we also have to run a business and, and you know extract value and recreate value. And so Free Unlimited was a model that we developed after studying other industries and, and interviewing customers uh, for how we could offer all of our software features and functionality to every gym owner at the lowest cost possible. And so the model is gym owners pay us $0 a month they also pay 0% processing fees, which is an interesting like sidebar. Processing fees are often more than software subscriptions for every company, but they are come out of top line revenue. So they're this hidden expense that some gym owners don't even know how much they pay in processing fees. But Free Unlimited eliminates that entire cost, which immediately for most gyms increases their profit by about 25%. And then the way we financially support it is we add a service fee to the invoices for the clients of the gym. So this is about a seven and a half percent service fee, um, similar to when you're buying, you know, concert tickets or something, their service fees. We're trying, we, we're not making it as, you know, frustrating as buying a ticket to a concert where they charge like 40%, but, but we're, we're, that's we're, that's how we're monetizing this offering. And when you think about the numbers we've talked about so far, like a gym makes $4,000 a month in profit, 12, 000, and you think about increasing that by 25% by passing on 7% to the members um, and, and just changing that model, it starts making a ton of sense. Like the gyms that have rolled it out haven't experienced any churn. Uh, if you communicate it in the right way, and now we have a lot of pre-built templates and tools to communicate it, your members are probably going to be like, great, you're going to have a, you know, this gym's going to stay around for longer. You're going to have more money to reinvest in equipment and in other stuff. So uh, yeah, at a high level, that's the model. It's a, it's a shift in the actual dynamic of how how Wattify makes money and, and who's kind of paying for the software. And for gym owners, it's a way to eliminate both the software and the processing fee cost immediately overnight and get access to all our features. How are you seeing adoption amongst your uh, amongst the platform users? Brand new gyms just starting out, this is a great option for them because mm -hmm. uh, they maybe don't have a ton of money to invest in software up front. They can get everything, but we've seen new gyms, small gyms, and all the way up to pretty big, well-established gyms, all, all different types switch over to this model. And the feedback again, overwhelmingly has been, I was nervous to do it, but I was thoughtful about the communication of my clients. I've experienced zero member cancellations since I rolled it out. And there's very few things in these types of businesses that overnight can increase your profit by 25%. Like um, it's not even, you know, it's not even a transition. It's like the next day yeah. you're not paying any processing and you don't pay another uh, monthly subscription invoice. I need to increase my business by 25%, right? In, in one day, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd sleep a lot better. 
so it's so we so we mentioned this came out on Jan, right around January first, and now you know we're we're kind of coming up. I can't believe it's already the beginning of March, but you know, yeah, Q, know. Q1's finishing up, and you've got now about six months in the seat. Um, what's 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 on deck here for the rest of 2024? What's the goal? The goal is to continue building the platform that we've been, the way we've been talking about our product for a couple of years now is building a platform that any type of fitness business owner can configure and customize. So it feels like it fits them like a glove. And aside from kind of free unlimited and some of the other initiatives we talked about, that is continues to be our, our mission. And I'll give you an example of something. There's a lot of features that we're building that tie into that, but one of the ones I'm most excited about that's in uh, kind of a private beta right now, we have about 50 customers on it. And by the end of the year, every, hopefully all of our customers will be using it is our Wattify workflows feature. And so that is probably the most sophisticated and advanced piece of technology we've ever built. And it lets fitness business owners build custom workflows within Wattify using all the data in our system to execute on any business process that they uh, that they want to model. So historically in Wattify and in other systems, a lot of gym owners have been forced to kind of design their processes around the software. Like, oh, it can only do this, so I have to do it that way. And mm-hmm. this unlocks, uh, you know, basically the, the sky's the limit for what they can do. And it really helps with some of the stuff we talked about with like client engagement and retention. Uh, so the, the um, workflows that we've built for our clients that are pre-built are things like the 90 day nurture for new clients, like getting people to 90 days milestone is huge into increasing that length of engagement. Uh, lead nurturing, so trying to help them improve their lead conversion rate. Um, and there's, there's a few others, but that's probably the single feature that I'm most excited about for this year. Yeah. Get them in more than six days and keep them more than than eight months. I think that's got to be the goal. The it, and yeah. I think it's, I think it's really important too as you as you lay that out because you're working not only with with CrossFit boxes but you're working with jujitsu gyms and there's like a whole range of different clientele. I mean, there's some crossover, but like those 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 have very different uh, different different feels, you know. And there's different people who are yeah. attending those things, and so you guys have to be super dynamic in the different offerings that you have. And I think it's been awesome to see. So I encourage everybody to get out there if you care about enhancing your business, which I hope you do, if you're listening to this, right, go, go read the bench, the benchmarking report, the 2024 fitness benchmarking report that you guys put together. It doesn't take that long. It literally takes like five or seven minutes, depending on how fast you read. And there's a lot of graphs and everything that lay it out and paint the right picture for you. And I think, and I don't, I don't run a gym, but I was super motivated to maybe run a gym at the end of that. (laughs) But it does provide all the data that we talked about, and then they got to check out Free Unlimited because uh, I think that I think that that is something that is going to be super impactful for a, a margin a, a business that can be a low margin business at times, and is very cyclical. But there's an opportunity in there to immediately increase that revenue stream, and if and if you're going to enhance what your customers and what your clients are doing every day because they're the most important thing then I think they got to do it right now. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. We got to, we got to bring you back and we're going to see how it's going in a couple of months. I look forward to the rest of the year. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. I'd love to be back. Thanks for having me. Grant. Enjoy the snow. You got a little bit longer. <laughs> American Jedbergs went out to form the foundation of the United States Special Forces and the Special Activities Director to the Central Intelligence Agency. Thanks for listening to the Jedberg Podcast. I'm your creator and host, Brandon Chopi. Join us next week for a new episode on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Check us out on YouTube for full episodes, highlights, and other behind-the-scenes content. If you like what you heard, give us a like and leave a review. Follow me, Brandon Chopi, Jesse Graff, Talent War Group, and our CrossFit game sponsors, U.S. Army, Wattify, GoRuck, and Hero Coffee on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Threads, or X. Send your comments and inquiries to Fran at JedbergPodcast.com. As a former member of Special Forces, the Jedberg Podcast donates a percentage of all proceeds to the Green Beret Foundation, supporting America's Special Forces and their families. Thanks for joining us on this episode. How you prepare today determines success tomorrow. <laughs>